but so demanding. Cause when you feel that sensation, there's no time for hesitation. Embrace for impact, prepare for landing. Yo, you start handling things different than you used to. What you choose to do is you commanding. Your own life centers when you're gone, life enters. The beyond life, have an understanding. somewhere between mid-February, beginning of March, just to have that extra time to kind of craft everything and make sure everyone has the right sound and it, and it blends well um, so people can really enjoy it. And I'm trying to make a CD where no one can skip through it, you know what I mean? What's up? It's your girl, Day Akolai with Conceited Bastards here on the comfy couch Chilling with some great art from Denver tonight. I'm here chilling with Trey. Trey is an amazing artist and producer who a lot of you guys may not have heard of because you slept on him. And he's about to change the game right now. Um, why don't, why, who, who are you? Tell us who you are what you do. Um, I'm just a guy who does music and does it as best as he possibly can and uh, puts every effort I possibly can into not sounding like anything else out here. And that's no insult to anybody out here. It's just I don't want to get put in a category with everyone else. I want my music to stand out. I want it to mean something at the end of the day. What does everybody else out here sound like, in your <laughs> opinion? <laughs> What's um, the Denver? Because I feel like I've been having this conversation with a lot of people about what is Denver? What do we sound like? You know, people are like, what do you guys do? Um... I mean, you, you have to do a lot of digging, you have to do a lot of looking around, but there are some real talented guys, a lot of guys I dig as far as, uh, Run with underground uh, since I'm wrecking when I'm checking on the microphone and represent 303. Welcome to the city where we roll the trees. Custom to the chronic, no sticks, no seats. Boulder to the grassland, just another bad man, percussive like a jazz man, blasting. Through the opposition's everlasting, military missions like we fighting in there. Um, A. Ivy, she's someone else I dig. Um, a lot of the members of the Lady Wu Tang, like I, I heard their freestyles. A lot of people didn't know that they could rap outside of just apparently, you know, doing Wu Tang songs. I'll never get through nothing without that bass thumping. This amusing junction, music helps us function. Function on a gumption to say something. It beats like you want in to scream and seem and see inside a scene and make a ruckus. Bumping gums, I'm close enough. Weird fears, cane. I fumble over words like I can't shape what I'm saying. Insane phrase, brain, but who's listening anyway? This house is saying that the eye ain't taking freestyle that they did and I was like my mind was blown that there's so many talented female artists in Denver and then there's you of course um I am not a rapper <laughs> <laughs> and then you know of course on the other end you got your guys who are kind of they're watching TV and they're they're watching the, the 106 in Park and the MTV Jams and and kind of listening to what's going on on the radio and trying to mimic that whole thing um those are the guys you can tell are just kind of looking to get rich off of it, like, this is the money maker, let's do this, and then there's, I, I, I can't really fool with them, you know, <laughs> they have their own crowd to each their own, but to me, it's more like, I like to deal with people who are serious about their art. Okay. Philosophical question, there's no right or wrong answer, but you're sticking to whatever you say. Okay. I'm pinning you against the wall. All right, go What for is it. your stance on this pop hip-hop? Is that less? And on top of that, the, the line that's being drawn between mainstream and underground hip-hop, like, is one kind of hip-hop less relevant because it's mainstream? Is it less conscious because it's mainstream? Um, I won't say it's less conscious. Uh, what I, think of what you're saying, you know, what you want to present to people. Um, you know, you can't always present to people the uh, party and bullshit life. Because life isn't always party and bullshit. There's groundwork somewhere in there, you know what I mean? It's people that, it, they work very hard on how they present themselves. But if, if, you, if you're out there trying to convince everyone that life is bitches, the club, making it rain, expensive alcohol and not explaining to people how you got there or what it takes to get to that point because if you don't do that in between you're gonna have a lot of people doing stupid shit like 
blowing rent money <laughs> on alcohol and things that they can't afford and then going into a panic at the end of the month because they haven't paid their rent. So, you know, depending on your message, guide the people. Don't just lead them to believe this is the life and you ain't shit if you're not living this life. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, a more afternoon. I come through with your impending doom. Hit you with the tsunami, niggas don't want it like Johnny. How do you go, Richter? Niggas don't even know I come through and bust them like the click, the inspector gadget. Come through, go, go, master flows and wreak nothing but havoc. Niggas know I am Mel Gibson, more of the maverick. Come through like the shock, they don't want the static. Electrify you, defy you. I'm 8.9 on the Richter scale. That means like Japan, niggas go down and then you fail, nigga. Set sail. How you gonna mess with my wind? I start where you begin and end where you finish These niggas is dentists, these niggas is dentists I'm finna dent they head kid, chillin' with the dent kid D-E-N-T is simply a symphony, I'm still Mr. Maestro Still Mr. Nitro, still Mr. I go Super hard, oh my god, I'm like Kung Fu Johnny These niggas don't want me, niggas want they mommy I'm finna give them the battle, shake them for A lot of people say that Denver has a whack hip hop scene. <laughs> what is your thoughts on that? Are we whack? Um, I don't think we have a whack hip hop scene. I just think we have bad representation. I think, <laughs> I think I, I'm not gonna say who. I'm not gonna say no names. I'm just saying like, you know, if you have what's that quote unquote conscious show where you got a, a Talib Kweli of the headliner or the Roots or someone in that area. The last thing those people who want to see that type of show or love that kind of music want to see is some shiny, closed Denver rapper <laughs> rapping about, quote-unquote, busting hoes and bouncing that ass and just bullshit because it's not the same thing. You know what I mean? It's just, that's, that's the biggest issue we have. We have whack representation, but we got a lot of talented artists here, and that's not just hip-hop. That's, you know, the rock scene. That's... You know, the poetry scene, just the arts itself. The I've, I've heard a lot of amazing jazz bands. Um, a friend of mine, Anthony, calls himself Natty Neen. He's, he's a very talented guy just as a musician, as a whole. So it's, it's a lot What's of... What's some of your other favorites? Some of my other some favorites locals. from here. Some folks um, from here that you should Google. Um, I would definitely say Google the other side. They're dope. Um, just because I've known them, and, you know, that's my whole thing. i worked with them for years. Um, YG is a part of that fold. I definitely want to say um, Aries Jackson. That's a James Ray Jackson, Leonard Jackson. Um, King Fo. I, I got into a lot of his stuff, and I realized I slept on that for a while. Um, again, Tone Scarfo, um, Interstate Ike. Um, you know, I... I, I, I I admire that dude because, you know, this guy's in a wheelchair, and he grinds very, very hard. So I look at a, a lot of guys who slack off, and I'm like, if this guy in a wheelchair can grind harder than you, what's your <laughs> excuse? Do you know what I mean? So um, it's, it's, it's so many. I could be here for hours pointing out people that I like here, but it's just, it's a lot of talent. You have to go digging for it. You can't just look at what's in the forefront and go, eh, that's it, because then you'll get bored. So. And most people have never even heard that perspective of Denver, that there is a lot of talent that you kind of have to dig through, and that we have a lot of talented genres, that there right. are jazz musicians, there's rock musicians, there's hip-hop musicians. One thing for me that really stands out about the scene is how blended all of those are. Right, you, know, right. you can go to a show at Herbs and catch some borderline punk rock group playing with a jazz group and an MC leading, right, you know, right. and it's kind of a weird, eclectic, but it's cool. Right, it's and, we've, cool. and we've had shows like that, like I did shows with YG where a rock band started and then you've got this kind of eclectic group that started and then you got us coming in and, you know, we're just observing everything like, wow, this is, where did this guy come from, where did that guy come from? So when you find that talent, you're really excited and, and, and you want to embrace it as opposed to, you know, you can you can tell the difference between the people who are, are, like I said, they take it serious. Every bit of the show, the sound, the the quality, the vocals, the pitch, you know, every instrument used, they take it serious. As opposed to the guy who, I got a, I got a drum machine, I'm going to use some 808s, and there's nothing against 808 sound, I love it actually, but 
I'm going to overuse this sound. It's going to be a boom clap. I'm going to say some words. There's my song. It's like, nah. How can an artist tell the difference, um, specifically in music, to, as to when? When are you a hobby artist that should just do it because it's fun? Because it's fun for some people to make beats and kind of write rhymes and stuff. And, but sometimes just to stay at home. Like, let's just be real. <laughs> like, some people rhyme on stage Definitely. that shouldn't rhyme on stage. And But, you know, everybody's entitled to their own hobby. How does right. an artist know, like, I'm at the point where I should be really pushing myself versus... I do this, it's fun, it's cool, I'm going to work at Sprint ultimately. It's, it's you know, it's, it's all within your drive, really. It's, uh, ultim- it, it, it's more, how do I explain? It's like, you can, you, you automatically can tell, you know what I mean? It's, it's the feeling you get in your heart when you're doing a song. Is this something that you love? Is this something you truly are like, I, I would love to, this is my passion, you know what I mean? It's something that you feel in your heart. And when it's in your heart and you put that into your music or whatever art it is that you do, people see that and they take that from what you put out there. They know when you're putting your all into it. And then they can see the other people who, they can look at people and go, oh, that's bullshit. They're just playing around with it. Do you think that a whack person can love it enough to overcome their whackness? Um... (laughs) <laughs> anything anything is possible. I think, first of all, with, with a whack person is, what one thing they have to understand is everyone's not a hater. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every Everyone is not, nope, not everybody hates your music. <laughs> you know what I mean? No one, it's, some people are actually trying to give you pointers and tips on how to make your music better. Constructive and, criticism. There you go. <laughs> and if you're not willing to listen to that constructive criticism if you're just, they're haters. You can't tell me my music is good. That's fine, but your five cousins that come to your show, of course they're going to tell you that your music's good. They're your cousins. They have to say (laughs) that. So that doesn't count by default, but you really have to, like, I'm not going to make it sound like I'm one of the best MCs. I get that a lot, but there are some songs that won't see the light of day because I would hear them the next day and be like, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> so. Have you ever had an album like, like Electric Circus, where you were like, <laughs> pushing some motherfucking limits, don't laugh at oh, me. Man. <laughs> where you was pushing limits, you know, I, where I, you was doing some shit, and people was like, I don't really know where you're going. I liked Electric Circus, me man. Too. A little bit. A me little too, bit. I liked it a lot. I didn't skip over it too much. Um, I only skipped over that Come Close song. <laughs> I thought that shit was so garbage. I was like, what the fuck is this? Are your eyes still green, girl? No. No. They had a, they're not going to change colors. But, um, <laughs> All right. I, I, never had a, I never had an electric circus. I can't say that. Um, mm. I did have... Like, I had friends who would bring me an electric circus type of idea, and I would just be like, you know what, I can't... And I would really put my effort into it, like, it'd be some fast, just off-the-wall, sun, moon, star, quasar type beat, if you will. And I'd really be like, okay, man, I'm going to try, but I'm not going to promise you anything. And then when I realized, like, it's not just coming to me, if the, if the beat and the music isn't just talking to me, then I can't do it. So I just was like, you know what, I'm going to gracefully bow out. I tried, but... Fuck that. I can't do it. So. <laughs> I feel that. What's this album about that you're working um, on right now? Substance Abuse is, um, it's kind of a play on the meaning. Um, there you go. Um, I mean, it's a play on the meaning. I, I, um, in continuing with the happy hour, what I wanted to do is transition into, okay, let's, let's, let's actually say something in the music. And that's another reason why it's substance abuse, because I actually have something to say. I have something that people want to hear, and, you know, people seem to enjoy it, so. Um, Is there a theme or a message throughout this album? Um, there's, there's quite a few different themes. One is to show people I'm very serious about what I'm doing. So, you know, I guess you could say I'm trying to give people a little competition and say, hey, I'm trying really hard. When this comes out, you're in trouble. You better step it up. And then, right? <laughs> and then the other thing is just, you know, having something to say. Having this, that's that's where the subs, the word substance itself comes into play. Is I wanted people to see that I really had something to say 
more than just party and bullshit. So, um, I talk about scenarios where, um, when my sisters were young and if they didn't have certain things, I would, I'd, I'd rob somebody for that or, you know, just doing what I had to do to make sure they was okay. And, um, my mother and her bringing us up, I talk about, um, my cousin going to jail and he possibly not coming home until he's 50 something years old and how he just got a raw deal in his trial. I talk about, you know, just quote unquote living in the last days and being kind of, being that guy that now I'm considering buying a weapon when I never believed in getting a weapon. I was, I was totally against guns. Now I'm like, these motherfuckers is crazy. I gotta get a gun. <laughs> Um, I talk, I talk about a lot of everything. Uh, there are some, I guess, you, not really, not really party records, but those records that are, you know, everybody will enjoy. Um, one record, I talk about a major breakup that I went through and the whole pro, like that particular one is a song called In Your Eyes No More. And when you hear the sample, you'll see why. But on that song, I spoke about being with someone and then making you feel like you could be with this person and fall back in love with someone and then just completely shitting on you and it's <laughs> it's one of the most like vulnerable records I've ever done actually and you should have had me on that one <laughs> <laughs> so it was you know I, I tried to touch on everything that was going on in the process of of recording this record and in all actuality I think I recorded about 40 to 50 songs and ultimately I think it'll be about 15 16 on there that are really I really sat back listened to everything I recorded and was like these are the solid ones this is what's going to be on there so when can we expect to hear it is there a single coming out what's um, the process for us the single right now I definitely recommend everyone looks for it. a lot of people seem to enjoy it is a uh, when the morning comes uh it was produced by a guy, um, ID Lab Beats. You can find him on soundclick.com slash ID Lab Beats. Uh, he, so, well, not to interrupt you, but you buy other people's beats too. Yeah. Because you're yeah. a producer as well. Right, right. So, on the album, how many tracks did you produce versus other people produced? Um, on the album, I think I produced, uh, I'd say about six or seven. That's tracks. dope. So why why do you use other producers on top of the work that you do? Um, I like to I like to dig around and listen to other producers. Um, I'll, I'll put going through SoundClick is like the same way I say dig through here to look for the talent. Dig through SoundClick and really listen to some of those people um, because it's a couple of guys that I connected with. Um, it's actually three guys. Uh, Swiss Boy, um, ID Lab Beats, and June G, they all added something to it. Uh, actually, another guy, Swollen Drums Productions, he added something to it. Um, I wanted to go with people who just had that that sound that was, you know, very smooth and very... Some guys are sample-driven and some guys play their own instruments. I just... I, I looked for people who... What they were making fell into what I was making... And it was like, okay, let me have these beats. I'll get these beats from you. I'll sit back. I'll listen to them. If I come up with something, I'll buy the beat from you. And I'll sit back and blend all of them together. So the order in which the beats and everything goes, it will kind of kind of shock people. Like, you'll hear my beats here. Then you'll hear this person's beats. And you can still tell the difference. But, you know what I mean? I, I tried to make everything go together as perfectly as I could. So that was the inspiration for grabbing other people's beats. It's like I, I want it to I want it to be great, basically. I feel that. Okay, so back to the album the single that's out. Um, When the Morning Comes is uh that was uh me kind of telling a story of uh it's it started with uh I was I was seeing someone at the time and I didn't know they had a um, a boyfriend who was in the halfway house. <laughs> so um, it sounded like our mace stories earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so um, 
What she doesn't know while I'm asleep in her bed is I hear her on the phone talking to this guy. Um, telling him, nah, there's no one here, it's okay, come on home. So once I hear her tell him to come home, my eyes got wide and I just got dressed like I'm out of here. And um, through that whole day, when the morning comes, it, it, it kind of spoke of everything I went through throughout that day. So literally every single detail of what I went to go eat, what the conversations I had, the speed traps that I ran into, um, hanging out with the girl that the night before, um, how I feel about rap right now and how serious I like. It's a overall the song is great and the um, it was produced by ID Labs again and that's one of those beats. Once he gave it to me, I sat there for maybe twenty minutes and listened to the beat and it was like. I got it, and that it, it kind of came about. It's very organic, and when you listen to it, you can tell that it's it's very natural the way it's Let's get it going. Yeah. I'm gonna do this the way I usually do it. You know what, man? Like, I'll be on some other shit in the morning. Listen. At seven in the morning, I'll be putting on my clothes, leaving your house before the halfway house releases your spouse into the wild. Grabbing chicken and eggs at the Waffle House, looking for a couple beats to knock out. Converse about the lockout. The speed traps is out, and I just want to make it home. Also, um, the reason I wanted it to be free, because everyone has dealt with the, the guy on the 16th Street Mall that walks up and goes, Hey man, do you support your local hip-hop? And then you feel kind of pressured. <laughs> so it's like, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be that guy that's selling his music. It's like... I make great music, it's free, no pressure to hear it, so when you finally do take the time to listen to it, you'll be pleasantly surprised and go, wow, he's actually pretty good, and, you know, actually serious about it, as opposed to, um, I'm not gonna say your name, but you've been trying to sell me the same damn CD for six years. We all know who that nigga is, yeah, outside so. independent records on <laughs> Broadway and Colbeck. Him too, so now it's, now it's two <laughs> of them. There's a couple of y'all. I don't buy like eight whack ass CDs from that fool too, but I buy them because I respect his hustle. Right, he's always right. He's consistently out there every day. That nigga has not worked a job for ten years. Right. Who see, can hate on that? So see, that's, that's, that's an example of where your mediocre whackness could be triumphed by your work ethic. And see, and I'm not knocking you. I'm just saying I want to hear some new shit from you. That's all. You know, it's just. I new shit. You should keep selling insane ass wax CDs and don't. I mean, I, you know, buy some studio time from my brother right here yeah, and I, do some new shit. Would you let him be on your beat? I wouldn't mind it at all. I, you know. Yeah, you let Wackness be on your beats? Um, do you ghostwrite for them? Do you do like Kanye and be like, uh, yeah. I'm going to need you to go, huh? Right there. Nah, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I can't <laughs> ghostwrite for nobody. <laughs> It's just, it's too hard. You don't I'm, ever adjust anybody's nah, four you, count? <laughs> you buy the beats. If I if I make the, I, I like to test some of y'all. So honestly, I'll make a beat and it'll be just some hum, blah, blah shit. And if you go, oh my God, that's hot. I'll be like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure <laughs> before I sell you this beat? Phone. Are you sure? Yeah, man, I want that. If you spend your money on that beat and everybody else tell you it's whack, it's your fault. You sh you had your own judgment on that. Nothing to do with me. So <laughs> cool as blue steel, proof of the new deal. Move like the wheels through stress. I'm like a bomb and electric automobiles. I'm like a pill for ED. See me when you need it real long. No, you can love me. Coming from out the stomach of a mule drum. Smuggling, rumbling on the stool. I'm a sheep. Take a whiff. I'm funky. I'll make you move. I'm sleek. Godfather of the crew. Uh -huh. You see me vibe hard. I show we prove. Any weapon you choose, you can use any collection of crew. You still lose when you come test the best. I stress we press snooze on niggas. Put them to sleep when they remove the Cause ain't no room for the week We move the tool quicker Cowboys and jeeps The move get thicker When we slip up the street Pick up the freaks And the money Them dumb as you speak We tell them to sit down Study the heat As I continually stab them Out the house I feel like I'm walking 0.02 miles per hour Out the shower My two cup clean My pool cut clean My eyes is out of Um, you can definitely go to soundcloud.com backslash Trey's Music, T-R-E-S-M-U-S-I-C. Um, you can go to ReverbNation.com backslash Trey Has Music. <laughs> um, 
Facebook. Uh, on there, you can find me under facebook.com backslash Dontaray, D O N T O U R E. Um, and Twitter, you can find me at Trey Smith 303, capital T R E, capital S M I T H 303. And uh, again, if you want to reach me personally, Dontaray at gmail.com. So. That's what's up. Thank you for coming and kicking it with me on our cozy, conceited bastard couch. <laughs> um, definitely pick up this album when it comes out. I'm on there getting my scene on <laughs> and stuff like a star because I do everything. I want to give a super shout out to Primer Dome for this awesome ass Easy E holding the gun shirt. This shit is cool as fuck. And as a girl, every time I wear it, I get like hella buck wild and go out and... Just be crazy. Any of my jewelry or clothing, with the exception of the t-shirt, you can order online from my online store, which is conceitedbastards.etsy.com. That is E, T as in Tom, S, Y. You can Google Conceited Bastards and all of the gear will come up. You can also catch up with me at facebook.com slash conceitedbastards. Become a fan of my page. It'll link you to my Twitter it's just best to Google Conceited Bastards. Stay tuned. I got a website launch coming up pretty soon. We're going to do some more interviews. Maybe we can even go to a live show and catch some footage when the release of the album comes out. Substance abuse. Tell them the last thing they need to know about you. Uh, we working on it, man. Also, shout out to DJ 5280. He's a... Uh, one of the guys who's going to be kind of guiding me as far as the shows and everything goes. I definitely can put my, some of the music aspects in his hands. So I definitely want to shout him out. And uh, y'all just be on the lookout, man. Also, after this one wraps up, I'm not going to divulge into it too much. We don't have enough time. But after that, I'm going to be releasing another one called My Bad Motherfucker. Like I'm telling her, it's a very arrogant album, but you'll love it. So. We're going to be all over that one. <laughs> <laughs> one love from Denver, y'all. You can hear it in my voice, see it in my eyes. When I tell you when the truth, I ain't never lied. I let the secret out, I apologize. But no one has swagger like these three guys. I stay cruising through the traffic, listening to my shit. Got the windows down, the host is looking, they on my dick. And I can't blame her, your boy is a killer. Swatter with his killer, Reggie Rockwell and Gibbs. Trail fool, why'd you?